predicting precipitation. So we are going to predict if you would get a precipitate under certain circumstances by comparing the KSP to the Q value. So essentially what we'll have certain concentrations and we're going to figure out based on those concentrations what this Q value is or your, the trial ion product and then we're going to look at it versus KSP and we'll say okay is this going to shift to the left or is it going to shift to the right and what does that mean in terms of whether we get a precipitate or not are the ions going to come out of solution or not if the Q value is the same as the KSP that means we have a saturated solution so you're not going to get a precipitate form because it's it's right on the balancing point there it doesn't have too many ions so they're not going to come out of solution it has just the right amount of ions for the the water to hold and so it is in equilibrium it is saturated if q is smaller no precipitate is going to form that's telling us that it is unsaturated the water could hold more ions if q is larger than ksb then the reaction is going to have to shift to the left and, and we're going to write the solid on the left hand side so when it shifts to the left that means it is going to form a precipitate because the solution itself is super saturated so we can often if the question doesn't give you the ksp value it might just give you the situation and say okay are we going to get a precipitate or not uh, look up the ksp values on a table and then you can compare them to your q and remember the lower the ksp is the less soluble the substance is that you're dealing with make sure that you can also figure out of if you're doing a reaction of the products that are being formed which one's going to be soluble so so if you don't have a solubility table you might want to take a look at that or if you're not familiar with which ones are are more likely to be insoluble because if you're forming two products and one of them has high solubility and one of them has low solubility you'd want to do the calculation for the one that is low soluble because that would be the one that would give you your precipitate before the other one would so if there's two products solve the q value for the least soluble product so looking at visually in a saturated solution we're at equilibrium in an unsaturated solution essentially your q value is going to be less than your ksb value there's there's not as many ions in solution we could put some more in so more ions will dissolve into solution when it's at equilibrium there are ions still dissolve into solution but there are also ions crystallizing and that is happening at the exact same rate so we have our our equilibrium established if it's super saturated what that means is there's too many ions and some of them are going to have to come out of solution and crystallize um, and form a precipitate now remember this is going to be true whether or not there is extra solid there as well so if you actually have extra solid there's going to be some dissolving but if your Q is less than your KSP then what that means is there's going to be more dissolving there's still going to be some crystallizing but there's going to be more dissolving into solution faster and so essentially that that lump of ions you have there they will continue to dissolve into solution just because you have a lump in the solution doesn't mean it's super saturated because that lump could be dissolving and crystallizing at the same rate it's at equilibrium and that's that's where our our ksp is going to be true um, if we have extra ions in solution and our, our q value will work out to be greater than our ksp it's going to have to shift in the direction leftwards to crystallize out some of those ions so they will crystallize out faster than they're dissolving it's not that none of them are dissolving it's just that they are crystallizing out faster and therefore you end up forming or, or growing or adding on to the crystal that is there all right so let's take a look at this we've got a couple of calculations we need to keep track of in this one here we have a certain amount of a certain concentration of calcium chloride we have again a particular amount of a certain concentration of sodium sulfate and we're going to put them together and we want to know whether when you put these two things together do we get a precipitate or not so the first thing is to write out the chemical reaction and to decide okay of the two products that are formed so we draw a double displacement reaction of the two products that are formed and you could look on a, a ksp table or a solubility table um, and of the two of them calcium sulfate is the most likely to be a precipitate compared to sodium chloride so it is the least soluble of the two products so it's the one we want to do the calculation for so to find the q we're going to write our trial ion product and essentially it's the same thing as our ksp equation but we're, we're not saying for sure whether it's at equilibrium or not we're going to find out what it is and then compare it to 
a known KSP. And notice that question doesn't give us our KSP, so we'll have to look up the KSP for our calcium sulfate before we can finish the question. But we need to know what is the concentration of calcium ions, and they're coming from this first solution. And then we need to know what is our uh, concentration of sulfate ions, and they're coming from the second solution. So we just need to know their concentrations. Now realize that we have their concentrations here, but this is before the two beakers are mixed. And so we have to do a quick dilution calculation and say, okay, well, we know what they are before they're mixed, but we're going to put them together. And so the volumes are going to change, the concentrations are going to change. So we have to just calculate what they are first, then run them through the equation, and then find out our Q value and compare it to the KSB value and say, okay, are we going to get a precipitate or not? So find these values. First one for calcium, and I would write out the uh, equation separately and say, okay, well, the calcium ions are coming from my calcium chloride, and I'd bother writing this equation out to make, to make sure that I get the right molar ratio, um, because again, it'll affect how many calcium ions I have. So whatever the concentration of calcium chloride is, it's a one-to-one -one ratio for my concentration of calcium. And so I know that I have 0.1 moles per liter of calcium ions. My sulfate is coming from my sodium sulfate, and again, I'm going to write out this reaction just so that I am sure that I'm dealing with a one-to-one -one ratio. So my concentration of sodium sulfate is a one-to-one -one ratio over to my concentration of sulfate. So it is also going to be 0.04 moles per liter. So I've got my concentration of calcium, and I've got my concentration of sulfate, but these are in separate beakers. So we have this beaker, and we have that beaker, this beaker, we are worried about the calcium ions. There's there's the chloride ions in there as well, but we, we don't care about them. And there's our sulfate ions in this other beaker. Now we are going to put both of them into a beaker together. And so the volume one and the volume two will be added together to give us our total volume in this new beaker. And because we're, we're diluting the, the sulfate ions that, that are in this beaker, with the volume of the first beaker and vice versa, that we're going to have a new volume here as well. So after mixing the volumes, we know that we're going to have 100 plus 100 is 200 mils. And so we should do a quick calculation, a dilution calculation. Again, something, if the numbers are easy, you can do it in your head. Um, but if not, you can use your C1V1 equals C2V2. We have our initial concentration, our initial volume, and our final volume is the 200 mils. So we're going to solve for our final concentration. But if we're doubling the volume, we know we're going to half the concentration. So we'll end up with 0.05 moles per liter of calcium. Not showing the calculation for sulfate, but again, same thing. We're halving its, its concentration because we're doubling the volume. But feel free to use your dilution calculation if the numbers aren't easy to do in your head. So the dissociation for our precipitate, the one, again, of the two products, the one that is the least soluble, the one that if there is going to be a precipitate, it'll be this one. Um, and so we have the concentrations now. We can plug them in. So we have our sulfate concentration. And again, don't forget the molar ratio. This one happens to be a one-to-one -one ratio, but make sure you, you use the equation to figure out what the molar ratio is and then whatever the coefficient is, they show up as an exponent in the Q expression. We have our 0.5 for our calcium ions. Plug the numbers in, and we end up with a Q of 1 times 10 to the negative 3. Now, we compare that to our KSB, which is... 7.1 times 10 to the negative 5, our Q is going to be greater than our KSP, which means it's going to have to shift to the left. So remember, um, our, our KSP value is going to be anywhere from 0 to I don't know, infinity, somewhere in between those two numbers for sure. And so if our Q value is over here, it's, it's greater than our KSP value, we're going to have to shift to the left. We're going to have to take some of those ions out of solution. And when that happens, we're going to form a precipitate.